and I don't take it for granted. I ask the Lord that you pass through me to speak to this wonderful people here today. Uh, as I bring your word, let the words uh, that come up from this leaves of clay be anointed words of God that will bless the hearts of your people, your spouse, to make impact in our world and be a blessing to all those that will come in contact with. We we'll give you thanks and we we'll give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let's say amen. amen. All right, I'm talking about coming in back. Every child we call as a believer in Jesus Christ, God expects us to make impact. If you know in the scripture the Bible says in the book of Matthew, Jesus gave the disciples, as he finished his ministry, the Great Commission, he told them, go into the world and preach the gospel unto all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That was a great commission. Now, if you say something is a great commission, that simply means it's a mighty commission. It is the utmost commission. As we take care of patients, as we work with our colleagues, as we work with our friends, staff members, you know, take care of what I mean, even in the grocery store, your roommates, God expects us to be communicators of this great commission, to be perpetrators of this great commission, to be extensions, people that have been committed with this great message to win others to Jesus Christ. That is the essence. If we don't do that, now that doesn't mean that what we're doing medically or clinically or socially or morally is not good. It's a commission. But amongst all the commissions, Jesus said, this is the great commission. One to say, why is it greater than what we're doing generally? The truth is, we have a brief time to spend on earth. We have a longer time to spend in eternity. And how many of you know that eternity is greater than a short time here on earth? Anybody agree with me? <laughs> and so it's, it's best to prepare for eternity because you can't change eternity. You can't change it. Your situations can change it. You could choose to say, well, I want to be a doctor and go to medical school. You could choose to say, I, I retire from medicine. I don't want to do medicine anymore and change to do something else. But your destination in eternity cannot be changed. That is the ultimate. And so as we take care of people here, now I understand that our first responsibility is to take care of them physically, but it's also important to keep eternity in perspective because that is the real deal, and there is blessings for that. So as I take care of my patients every day, as I take care of my surgical patients every day. As I see patients walk through my door, or their family members, I understand that possibly my responsibility is not only physical, but it may deal with emotions. It may deal with spiritual stuff. And believe it or not, sometimes the things that people are dealing with, they may appear physical, but they have an emotional or spiritual foundation. And if you can't take care of those other things, you may just be wasting your time. Just like you know symptoms, signs of symptoms. Now a patient can have a head, but you know that headaches may be caused by something else. It can be caused by high blood pressure. It could be caused by some endocrine disorder, theocrocytoma. It could be caused by different things. Now it's amazing if you just treat headache and just give Tylenol and not understand that it's along the right cause, you might just be wasting your time and prescribing things that will not be effective. So it's every man. Every man has a physical need. Every man has an emotional need. Every man has a spiritual need. What makes us unique from every other provider having a relationship with Jesus Christ is that we can take care of the other needs that the physical eyes cannot see. And once we can address that, not only are you taking care of them here for simply, you can take care of their spiritual destination. And that is where the blessing is, and that is where the real deal is. There was a story that I heard about uh, here recently on radio, KDRI. I listen to KDRI at the AM um, radio every, every day. And the preacher was talking about a group of doctors who would go to the South America to do surgery, you know, in Costa Rica, Colombia, and all those other places. And they would spend about two weeks of their family time, you know, and, and, and stay in the remote areas, do surgeries, and all that. Then it came to a certain point, uh, one of them just, you know, it was like God spoke to them and he said, you know, if we treat these people, leave the comfort of our homes, do this nice service, these are great things. I mean, child organizations do that. 
and we don't minister, we call it a medical mission trip, and we don't minister to the souls of these people, what has just happened is we've just shifted their dying dates. We've just postponed their funeral. Because if they die in sin, all our efforts is a waste. Now, but if we minister to their soul and they get saved, if they die, they go to heaven. Just in case some of them don't make it from that surgical table, they still go to heaven. So there is an eternal benefit for our sacrifice. Now tell me, when there's a multiplier effect to your efforts medically, it motivates you to even do it better and do it great. That's why God calls it a great commission. So when we talk about making godly impact, what I define godly impact to be is being Christ-centered in your approach to reaching out to people beyond the physical, taking care of them beyond what eyes can see. Because if you can touch the heart of a man, you have touched that man. If you have ministered to the family, then I'll tell you some of the people that you will take care of, the people you come in contact with, some of them will even be the family members that are great, dealing with elderly, managing situations, and you being a provider, you being a healthcare giver in whatever career path that you are, respiratory therapy, medical, uh, dental, you must be able to understand that there is something that God may be trying to show to you that the physical eyes cannot see. And that is why we're spiritual beings. And that's why God has given us this mandate. My encouragement for you today as we, we listen to this message and as you, you do the good work that you do, as you step out of this place, talk to your patients, take care of your patients, walk with your colleagues, understand that God has given you an assignment to be the difference and to make a difference in the lives of everyone that you have an opportunity to come in contact with. I'm going to give you a scripture this afternoon that kind of puts everything in perspective that we're talking about. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16, the Bible says, you are, this is Jesus speaking. I know many of us have smartphones, so you could pull up the Bible and somewhere you could follow. Matthew 5, verse 13 says, you are the salt of the earth. He says, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? He says, it's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled on the food. He says, you are the light of the world. So God, or Jesus, likens every believer to two major things that no man can really do without any person that is living, salt and light. He said, you are the light of the world. A town, King James Version says, a city that is built on a hill that cannot be hidden. He said, neither do people light a candle lamp and put it on a wall. He said, instead, they put it on a stand that it gives light to everyone in the house. He says, in the same way, Jesus said to every one of us, and if you're hearing this message this afternoon, he says that he lets your light shine before others. That is impact. That's godly impact. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Making godly impact simply means letting your light shine, letting the virtue that God has placed inside of you, that great talent, that great gift, to impact others beyond you. Life is always greater and sweeter when you're able to touch another person next to you. Let me tell you, if you think you have a problem sometimes, God sometimes will have to open your eyes to see people that have greater problems, greater situations, and then it brings to perspective how good God has been to you. Anybody got a good in this house? Just wave your hand, wave your hand for everybody. <laughs> okay, I will say, why did God say salt? Why, why salt? Looking at salt as a way to make God impact. Why did he use that, that description, salt? There are 16 salts can do for you. One, salt is a preservative. You know, it, that's an old form of preserving stuff. And so it, it has antimicrobial action. So listen to this. We are the salt in our various areas, in our various departments, in our various classes, in our various subjects, in our little, little um, educational study group. You are the salt. In MS2, you are the salt. In DS1, you are the salt. In MS3, you are the salt. 
You are God's preservative for that class. You are the one that God has put his eyes upon to make a difference. You are the difference. And the more you start understanding that God did not bring you into that class just for the fun of it, there is something greater than you that made God bring you there. There's always something greater that you cannot see. And you always have to ask yourself, Lord, why am I here? Now, if you look at the story of how you got the admission into school, many of you will know that it, it's a miracle that you even got in. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> have you ever written exams? You wrote an exam. You know you were not supposed to make it. You know. You know you read late. You know you just got some notes the night before. Then somehow, miraculously, you open the book, what they think, the scorch or whatever, and you saw that you, you, you passed the exam. Why right? isn't like, oh my God, oh wow, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you know why you made it? It's because God saw a greater good inside of you that is beyond where you are today. Romans 8 28 says, God causes all things to walk together for your good. So there is a divine hand behind that is making things happen. You are just part of God's orchestra to do good. So if you understand that, that you are the preservative. Now, when was the last time you ever heard anything great on the news? <laughs> In fact, the reason why it is news is because it is bad news. That's why. Because if it's good, nobody talks about it. It doesn't go viral real quick. Right? Nobody shares it, except it's something bad. But you know what? You have got good news where you are. You've got good news in the radiology department. You've got good news in the library. You've got good news in the parking lot. You've got good news in that department. In that little urology department, you've got good news. You are the light. You are the preserver to make sure that God is able to reach out to his people and save them. Because their souls are important to God. It's important for us to know that salt is also important because it adds flavor. Salt is a flavor enhancer. We are the people to bring flavor to the place, to make things taste good, to see, let the real nature come out, to let the genuine purpose of God manifest. Salt is a nutrient source of sodium. I know a lot of people, uh, of course, from the medical school, so you know that they say don't take too much salt, but you need sodium. <laughs> Your kidneys need them. Right? Somewhere along the line, somewhere in your body for equilibrium and the electrolytes, you need sodium. So you are the stabilizer. Some of you may not be preaching and doing everything, but you are God's stabilizer in that place. As far as you can reach one person, you are an answer to prayers. Thank you. <laughs> Salt also is a texture enhancer. Texture enhancer, like you see the crunchy pretzels. It is salt that makes it crunchy that way. We are the ones that give a texture to what a true medical dental student with integrity should look like. Who a true compassionate physician should look like. Have you ever met a nasty physician? <laughs> a surgeon who doesn't really care and cares only about the money he's going to make. But that's not a true way a physician or a dental surgeon or a respiratory therapist or a nursing person should act. Because the profession requires that you're compassionate, you're loving, you're caring. Now tell me, if you look at the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 22, you know that the fruits of the Spirit all exemplifies all these things that the profession requires. Now if you are in Christ, these things are like second nature. You don't need to work to be compassionate because naturally God has given you the Spirit to be compassionate. You're, not, you're, you're, you're full of joy. Now, it takes someone who has joy to make another person like the sand to be joyful. Anybody agree with me? A person that is depressed can't give joy. So if you, as a child of God, you have the fruit of the Spirit, the Bible says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, goodness. All this fruit, all this manifest, they are naturally in you once you have Christ inside of you. So you can see that, yes, you might be dealing with a cancer patient, and everything may look bad. But you're, you're coming into that room as a little MS1 student, 
You may think you don't know what you're doing. Well, I don't know all the drugs for oncology and all that. But you can bring a message from God, an encouraging word that ministers to their spirit. And if you know anything about medicine, once the spirit of a person is revived, they have faith to be healed. And so that's what God is saying, that we should make godly impact. So I want to say this to us today, in your institution, right here in your Tesla, let me tell you, we are the people that is keeping this thing. You may not believe it, but once God has people in an institution, God takes care of that institution. So I always say, what's the essence of CMB? Anybody talk about it? What's the essence of CMB here to you test it? Just Thursday lunch. I'll tell you. You just like Noah. You remember Noah? Noah was one single person, but God was able to preserve the, his creation with Noah. Just the preservation. He killed everything. But he preserved the earth because of Noah. Okay, I'll tell you another person that God preserved. You remember when the Bible talks about when the angels came to visit um, um, Abraham? And they were going, and Abraham was talking to the three visitors and said, You know, if you see five righteous people, would you still destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? If you see 20, if you see 30, you know. He, he was trying to negotiate with God about the preservation of Sodom and Gomorrah by the righteous people. And can I tell you today, just looking at the people that are here seated, we are more than 10, we are more than 20. So even if something was to happen to this institution, just because God has righteous people here, God keeps this institution. I tell the people in our church, if you're privileged to be a nurse, you're privileged to be a janitor in the hospital, do you know that God can preserve that whole institution because of you? And just right where you are, you may say, I don't know if my effort really makes a difference. Can I tell you? Every effort that you make in the name of the Lord is an impact. And I pray that you make a great impact wherever you are. Amen. Let me even say amen. amen. All right. When the scripture talks about the light, the Bible calls us light. And if you look at in the book of John chapter 1, the Bible says in him, talking about Jesus, in him was light. And that light was the light of men. In him was light, and that light was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. Church of the one we use in the sky. Now, all over the world, the Bible talks about that there's gross darkness that covers the earth. Always bad things happening. He said, But the light of God, in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, he said, But the light of God shines upon you. So when you have Jesus inside of you, you are the light to the world. You are the difference maker. You are the person that shines so that other people can know what Jesus truly is or who Jesus is. Now let me tell you, some people will never read the Bible and you may be the only Bible they get to read before they die. You may be the only Bible they get to read or the only person they get to meet before they make the decision, should I give my life to Christ or not? Do you know by barely associating with people, you, God can use you to win that soul and save the family. If my the story of my family, uh, how we came to the Lord, and of course today, by the of our passion, was a man who listened to the message far away from home. And in his vacation time, he decided to come back to our little village back in Africa to talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ. My dad gave his life to Christ, my mom gave his life, her life to Christ. They got saved, and I'm saved today. And you can see, that where I'm making an impact and speaking the word of God to a group of people is far away from where the gospel was released. Many times when God uses you as a light, the light always shines brighter beyond the area where the light is, 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 is laid. So God wants us to shine as a light. The Bible says the city set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. You cannot hide light. The Bible says darkness cannot overcome light. I don't care how bad things are, light will always trump darkness. Light will always overcome darkness. And what is light? Light is doing good. Making every effort to be a blessing to those around you, to help in others. Like we go on mission trip. I remember my first mission trip to Sabinas. Can we have that? You know, I, 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 did, I saw about two or three hundred uh, patients. I was the only dentist. I was chopping teeth for two days. <laughs> and you know what? Even though it was tough, it was a far place from my home. But it, 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 it brought so much joy. You know, I discovered that the things that give you the greatest joy are the things that don't deal with money. It's making a difference. 
And the way the people would hug you and tell you thank you. Because they would have paid maybe hundreds of dollars to do that and they got it for free. But you know what? It was, it, it was an act of kindness. So how do we shine light? By showing love to others. And giving them things that they never expected they would receive. And once you show that love, they open up themselves to receive the gospel of Jesus. I discovered one of the greatest way to tell people about Jesus is showing them love. If you see a patient, once you show people love, they don't react rudely. Each time people tell me, oh, this person is a crazy patient. I told them, I said, in my experience, I have never had a crazy patient. And someone told me, why would you ever say that? I said, because I've always known in my heart that if they walk through my doors, my first responsibility is to show them love. And when you show love to people, you're making an impact. You're shining as a light. And Jesus said, let your light so shine. Now hear this. Why did he say, let your light so shine? Why did he just say, let your light shine? Because you have the ability to turn the switch or flip the switch on and off. And so many people are like, this place, this ball may be working, but if you're not flipping on, it's not going to serve you. So you could choose to show love or not to show love. You could choose to be kind or not to be kind. You could even choose to show more kindness, little kindness, no kindness. So what God is saying, what Jesus is saying, let your light so shine. Make the effort not just to shine, but to shine well. So that when people see your good works, they can give glory to your Father in heaven because you were made in the image and after the likeness of God. When people see us, they should see God in us. Angels were not made in the image of God. We were made in the image of God. So when God made man, he made us in his image. So we are extensions of God to the people around us. There's a reason why God is bringing this message to us this afternoon. As I bring this to the close, there's a reason. You know, in the marketplace, wherever people work in every area of the community, people work in different offices, different dimensions, we in the medical field, we're doing great things, we're doing wonderful things. But God does not just want us to just do the physical work, because anybody can do the physical work because they get paid, because of job security. But there's more to just the job. There is Christ centered in everything that we can do, so that we can be extensions of Christ to them, to share the love of Jesus with them, to win souls. The Bible says in Romans 2 Corinthians that God has committed unto us the message of reconciliation. So your number one responsibility, as you do the medical work, as you do the dental work, I'm not saying you should make it the center, but keep in perspective the souls of these people, because God may want to reach them and save their souls through you. What are three ways? You can make God an impact. Number one, by love. Now, as I was reading the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible says, even if I give myself to be burned, even if I, if I sing like the voice of angels, I do all this and I have no love. I have gained nothing. So I said, God, how do you say that I give myself to the bond? 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4, and I gain nothing. I mean, just like people do water rounds and spend time in surgery and almost kill themselves, they call it sacrifice. God told me, you could do all those things for yourself because you love it, not because you want to be an extension of God's love. So I want to challenge you, one way to make it back is to make sure that the love of Christ is communicated through you to every person that you come in contact with. Number two, what is one way we can share or make impact? Is by making sure that Jesus is communicated to the people. Because the only solution to them making heaven is through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. John 26, the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. There's no way they can make it to heaven except through Jesus. So as you bring the gospel, as you bring the medical knowledge, Find a way and just kind of find a way in the same and say a prayer with them. And just tell them, you know, Jesus can help you. Really, because Jesus is a healer. And I've prayed with patients before. I'll tell you that some of them, I've never seen a patient, I'm still yet to see a patient that was in their dying moments or in their difficult situation that I told them, can I pray with you? And they said, no, I have never found them. If I find them, maybe it's tomorrow. <laughs> because when people are faced with health challenges, they need solutions. 
And can I tell you, Jesus is the solution for the world. Number three, way to make impact is by letting the fruit of the spirit that God has put inside of you to let it come out. Love, joy, peace, kindness, patience. Any way that God has given you this gift, this time. Maybe you're just a very patient person. Maybe you're very kind. Maybe you're very sweet. Maybe you're very compassionate. You're very loved. Helping your co-students. Just let God use that to reach others to you. In fact, it may be that the people that God wants you to make impact with in that life are your, are your colleagues. I remember my time in dental school. I made every opportunity to encourage the radiologists, the dental assistants, the people that you think they're not important. Let me tell you, you might be the extension of God to them. Finally, Jesus made it easy and summarized it for us in Galilee in uh, Matthew chapter 5. He called it the Beatitudes, and I'm just going to read it, and I'll pray with you, and I'll go. I have two minutes. The Beatitudes simply means supreme blessedness. This is God saying for how you can make it back. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. He said, for well, this is the kingdom of God. He said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And he said, mourn with those that mourn. So some people are grieving, and you might just be in love for them. And just tell them, I know I can't bring back the dead person, but I want to let you know, they're in a bad place. Just that encouraging what is an impact. He said, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Sometimes, in the business of your schedule, and trying to do all that, make a difference, touch a life. Open the door for someone. Help someone that needs help. Help someone. I know you have some anatomy and some physiology and some biochemistry stuff to do. And some medical stuff. But maybe you're in the grocery store and you see someone trying to carry a child and move some stuff. You might hold the door for them and just help them. Can I help you? In the middle of that, you know you can be a blessing to someone. They don't need to be in the medical field for you to make it happen. The Bible says, Blessed are the those that hunger and test after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful for the the show mercy. He said, blessed are the pure in heart, making sure that you have a right of heart, you don't commit sin, because if you are doing sin or you're living a life of sin, you can't really make impact. You can't. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they should see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will come during God. Then blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let me tell you, you will go through stuff. In fact, the Bible's uh, a career is challenging. Sometimes you suffer for things that you didn't do wrong. But your response as a child of God can either make someone who didn't know Jesus to truly say, you know what, there's something about you that makes you special. And make them to know the Jesus that you know. Hopefully I'm able to bless you this afternoon. Uh, that brings me to the end of my time. I really thank you so much for being here.